In the name of one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The next time that you go to Maine, consider heading for the less traveled roads of the far north. The village of Lubeck, for example, is the easternmost point of the United States and right on the Canadian border. By car, it's less than 250 miles from Portland, but from the crowds of tourists in Kennebunk and the outlet malls of Freeport, it seems more like a million miles. Once there, should you decide to get off the main road and go exploring, you could end up at Quoty Head State Park, famous, well, sort of, as much as anything in Lubeck can be famous, <laughs> for its iconic red and white striped lighthouse. But even that lighthouse, as charming as it is, is not what I hope you will find. Look for the Coast Guard Trail. It's only about a mile long, with forests to the right and to the left, down several hundred feet of sheer rock, the vast Bay of Fundy. Imagine for just a minute this trail as a balsam-scented cathedral strewn with wildflowers. The aisle of this cathedral is only a single file pathway and you will have to be careful so as not to trip on the gnarly tree roots at your feet. Ocean views, deep blues framed by shades of green are the stained glass windows. On a sunny day, they shimmer in the bright light. If you take this path, you will be walking, perhaps unbeknownst to you, into the borderlands. There is a literal and quite ordinary border between the land and the sea, but there is also, metaphorically speaking, a not at all ordinary, potentially even dangerous, border where the edges meet. Pushing the metaphor a little bit further, we could say that you may find, if your heart is tuned to it, a mystical border between heaven and earth. Your feet will still be planted firmly on the ground but it might feel like God is right there occupying the same space and time as you are. The air that you are breathing is God's breath. The brush of leaves against your body, God's touch. The bird you hear but cannot see is God's voice. Now here, I must make a disclaimer. Borderlands, as beautiful as they can be, are not necessarily feel-good places. Christine Paintner, reflecting on her walks along the Oregon coastline, writes, walking these paths is like walking along the edges where two wild places meet. And in that space, I encounter the wilderness within me. The landscape of earth and sea pressed against each other, wild against wild, speaks to something deep within me. The place where God's voice often whispers and sometimes roars. The trouble is, we can't know 
whether we will encounter a whisper or a roar. Not on a trail in Quoty Head State Park, not in Calvary Church, and most certainly not in the confusion outside an empty grave in Palestine 2,000 years ago. Today is Holy Saturday, and we have just heard the words from our scriptures that help us understand how we, all of us, are part of a holy story. When we stand in this particular moment in the story, when we're standing between the suffering of Good Friday and the fulfillment of Sunday morning, we are also in a borderland. That first Saturday probably didn't feel holy at all. Every hope had been shattered. And even though Jesus had tried to tell his disciples what would happen, they simply were not capable of understanding. I wonder what those disciples, including the women, did on that Saturday. Did they cling to each other in their terrible grief? Did they scatter and go into hiding? Did they take up their fishing nets and sweep out the house as if life were normal? I wonder if any of them lashed out, blamed Or not knowing another way, the disciples were living in two, although they could not have known it at the time, the ultimate mystery of the faith we claim. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We cannot know what Holy Saturday was like for the followers of Jesus. But we do know that some of them, Peter, John, Mary Magdalene, and some of the others, would later go out to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Their individual stories are for another time. The point for this moment is that they did not know on Saturday what would happen on Sunday, and neither do we. In his wonderful book, Living on the Border of the Holy, Episcopal priest William Countryman writes that this border country is one we all carry within us. There is a fault line running down the middle of our lives that connects our ordinary reality with its deeper roots. The border country, this place of unknowing, he argues, is what gives our lives meaning. This border country, he writes, is a place of intense vitality. It does not so much draw us away from the everyday world as it plunges us deeper into a reality of which the everyday world is like the surface. To live there for a while is like having the veils pulled away. All of us have visited this country from time to time. We may seek it, or we may be pulled in kicking and screaming. Either way, if we can allow ourselves to be in that space, even when, especially when, it's uncomfortable if we can allow the holy Saturdays of our lives access to our souls, then we will begin to know the abundant life that Jesus offers us. 
just a very short time ago, Madeline Ruth Jasper entered this world from another one. She crossed the border between heaven and earth, if you will. In a moment, she will be baptized into the community of all believers throughout the ages. And she will be affirmed as a beloved child of God by this particular community of Calvary Church. Oh, thank you, Ruthie. So fresh from God for reminding us of the mystery from which we all came. May your days be rich and full, and may your own borderlands teach you well about love. Amen.